Hi, how you doing? It's Jeff Sinker back again with a special lesson today because this lesson is the 100th Iron Maiden video lesson that I have created over these years. I want to say a big thank you for all those people out there that have supported me. All the comments I've got, I know some have been a bit negative, vast majority have been really positive though. In my support, I am just trying to show you how to play these. These are not great cover versions that I've seen lots of people like to do it. I'm trying to pass on the information for you to progress. And I know some of you are probably going to be playing it better than I will because you can really focus on what I've shown. But I think the vast majority of what I've been doing is correct. Not always 100% correct, but I think it's good enough to get you playing these songs. So if you haven't subscribed, but you've been watching all of these lessons over the years, why don't you today click on that subscribe button? If you can't do that, click on, on that like button. Just do something today while you watch this video to really support this channel and help it grow. Well, that's enough of me gibbering on. Let's get into this 100th lesson and let me show you how to play Sun and Steel. Right, what we're going to do is just look at that opening lick. I'll play it through and then I'll break it down for you. So it goes like this. <laughs> Right, this really is about a timing when you're playing this. Uh, the riff itself is fairly straightforward. It's making sure you're coming in on the correct timings. Uh, what I'd noticed when I was looking at tabs for this, that uh, a number of the tabs were actually wrong. When you would listen to the track, the opening section on the original tablatures was incorrect. So what I've done, I've adjusted everything and you'll be able to uh, get the tablet here from the links down below for this lesson. Now, the lick itself is playing over an F sharp five chord, you can see it. You are gonna play two and four. Then you're gonna play the five on the E string. Back to the F sharp and then down to an E5. So we get... Okay, fairly straightforward. But that has got to be played on the end of the one count because you hear that drum. So you get that boom, da, 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 da. So you've got to make sure that that is coming on the end. So it's one, two, three, four, one. Okay, that's your opening leg. Now, there is a count because that's going to be ending on the three count. When you play that, that's on the three. Now, your next lick is going to come in eight counts later. Now, I found this the easiest way to do it. As soon as you hit that uh, E chord, you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the easiest way to do it is just to play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then which is the next part of the lick, which is the same part we're opening with. So we play that original. But then we're going to go across to an A chord, and I'm just going to be playing 2D, 2G, and 2B. Then we go back to the F sharp. Now, this on the timing on that is going to be 1, and then you go and 2, and one and two and one and two and and you also put a rest in there so you come out of that so you get that so let's just quickly put that all together and just play it nice and slow so you get that one two three I know I didn't put the rest in there, but it should be there. I just think it sounds better without it, but that's the way it was done on the record. 
So that is your omni section and that riff that you've played does appear later on in the song as well. Now we are into the chuck section. Now we are playing this chuck is down, down, up, down, down, up. It's that. It's that chuck. And we're going to play that four times. Now that comes on the four count of the bar. You get this one, two, three, four. And from that, you then play an open E. And then we're back into the. That's always that pull, that A to the F sharp is always the pull on this song. So we're coming in as we did that. Okay, it's easier to play quicker, believe it or not. If I slow this down, which I'm going to try and do now, it gets a little bit more confusing. But we're coming in from that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You hear that open E string? So that's what you've got to get. You've got to count that four. One, two, three, four. Back into that riff. Now the next time round, we're only going to do the chug three times. So we're coming in from one, two, three. And then he goes into an E. One, two, Kept that straight after that three. One, two. Then that's coming back on that one count. Now we're going to play that whole section twice. So we get this. Now from that part, we would then go straight into the verse, which is what we're going to check out now. So I'll just play through the verse section and then break it down for you as normal. So it goes like this. And that chord there is taking us towards the chorus section. So what we've got there, we are playing three and a half bars of the chug on the E chord. So you get this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Then we've got the that chord, not that chord, should I say, that part that we did at the intro. Now, the trickiest part, you get so kind of lost in the groove, is getting it on that free, because that's got to be free, free, and down. So we've got to get that. I always find that that is the trickiest part when I've been playing this, because like I said, you kind of almost fallen asleep. <laughs> To that lick there. Anyway, from that part, you then play your usual. You're going to play that four times and then back to the E onto the A. Now, this one going into the chorus, what we're going to do, we're going to again play it four times going into the E, but then we're going to hit onto an A power chord. Or an A, we're going to be playing down here on the two, two, and two. So you're playing. And that is into the chorus section, which gives us a little bit of a break from the chug. So let's go and check that out now. And as I've said, as soon as you come out of that and you hit the A chord, we're already into the chorus section. Now we're going to go from an A to a G chord or a G5. 
sound very very similar but we are what i'm doing now i'm just kind of playing it as like an open beginners chord g really lets that ring out when you play that because you're going to sustain this for two bars now the county on this apart from that first one which came in on the one the remaining chords you're going to go one two three four one two three four and and you're going to hit on the and of that four it makes sense the and of the four so you go one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four on the next chord you're going to go to a d again standard d chord so it rings out then I go to a C. This chord there, I'm taking it as the one that is played in that A shape. So I'm playing A3 and then G, D and G5. And again, you're going to hold that all the way through that two bars until you get to the and. And then you go back to your A. So we start all over again. So we get this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 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 At the end of that, we go back in. Now, again, that one can be a little bit tricky to get in that that feel. When you come out of the C, because you're going to hold that, that four, and then you've got this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Back into your usual. Play that four times. <laughs> Same as we've done before, so... You got the first one does the four times and then you plays your riff you come out of it you do the chug and you're going to do the three going into so we go through the entire second verse again and we go through the chorus section again and when we come out of the chorus section we are into the bridge or the interlude section first of all though i want to look at what is being played by adrian on the rhythm guitar section and make a little bit more sense when we go through the actual set lead line so he's going to be starting off on an E5 chord. He's going to play that for two bars. Then we're going to shift down to a D5 for two bars, shift down to a C sharp for two bars, and then down to a C for one bar, back up to the D for one bar, and then start all over again on the E. So we get this. <laughs> that so that is the rhythm that is being played by uh adrian so now let's have a look what is being played by dave murray over the top of that and it goes like this <laughs> Right, let's look at the notes. Well, we are going to start off on the 4th fret on the uh, G string. We go on to the 7th fret on the D, and I use my little finger for that. We're going to play a 7. Back up to the 4, and then go into a 5 on the G. And then back to the 4. And then a 7-5 on the D. So we get... Then I'm going to do a 4-5 on the D and then finish on the uh, 5 fret, which is the D on that A string, which is when you hit that D chord coming down. Then we go back to the 7 on the D string and we do a 7-4-5 on the G. 
Then we're going to ascend, so we do a 4, 5, 7 on the G. Now this is where the chord is changing down to that C sharp, so I do a 4, 5 on the D. And then down to that C sharp, which is that 4 fret. Back to our 7 on the D with our usual 4, 5 on the G afterwards. Do the ascend. Now this time he's moving and he's still going to continue ascending. So I'm doing a 5, 7 on the G. And I pick up the 7 on the B string. Now I'm shifting fully to the B string. I'm doing a 5, 7, 8. And then I've got the final part is a 8. Sorry, we are going then playing a 7, 8. On the B string to the 5. And then I do back on the 8 on the B string. And then a 5, 7 on the high E. So that last one, which is the busy one, we get. Nice little ascending line there, just going through the scale. And then, of course, we repeat it, because it would then go back to that. And we repeat the whole line all over again. So that is the interlude section, and that takes you to the solo by Dave Murray. And it's only a short solo, but it just really is crazy. Now, I've got to say, if you don't have a whammy bar, you're going to struggle for this part. Uh, but it's really more of a feel thing when you're going to be playing this. Now, this is my interpretation of what I'm hearing on the track. And it goes like this. That's what I think he's doing. I say I've slowed it down a number of times. I know I'm not got it perfect. But I think it's close enough that you could start to build off on it. But you could see that problem. You need that whammy bar for certain parts of it. You could get round it. But to get that kind of feel where, especially towards the back end, you need that whammy bar for them little dives. But the first part, you don't need a whammy bar. We are just taking on the B string. We are just doing a trill between the 14 and the 17, which starts off on the 17. And you're just moving down a fret at a time. <laughs> Then, this is where the whammy bar comes in. You want to hit that open E string. Now, I don't know if he does a full dive. I can, again, it's very hard to hear. But he does take it a long way down on that bottom part. But I think there's two when I think about it. You come back up. And you've got to slide or hammer in. I think slide would be better. From the 12 to the 14 on the B string. Then you give it some serious whammy bar. So you got that. Then you've got this. And now this again is a feel thing on that whammy bar. You're going to go back on your trilling, but you're going to keep dropping it down. Very kind of Joe Satriani. But then you come out of that, and I think it's one. So you got to do three drops. Back on to that 14 there. You could put again some serious damage on the whammy bar. Doing that. And then you're going to finish it off on the 17th fret on the high E string. Now, I know some of you are going to say, no, there's nobody's doing it. I, I, you know, I've got no argument with that because it really is hard to figure out exactly what he's doing. Uh, but I think that would give you uh, a good kind of landing to start from. Uh, now, behind that, what Adrian is doing is this. <laughs> 
So he's just playing that. What he's doing is the gallop. He's just playing through that F sharp. He's playing it over two bars. On the four count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. He's playing that open E. So if you just want to play that instead of the crazy solo, be my guest. He plays that three times. Now, out of that, we get this kind of... Uh, a chromatic rise that we're playing because he's going to shift himself back into a key again. There's going to be a key adjustment. So what he's doing, he's going to go up from the two. And he's just going from the two, one, two, three, plays that three times, moves up a fret to the third. Uh, so he's doing a G5, moves up again, does another three. Then he moves up to the 5 fret. And then we've got a 6, 7. So you get this. From there, we then go and play a 3, 4, 5 on the power chord. But this time, instead of playing the double line, we go... And it just is a full chromatic. So we've got in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. From there, we go straight back into the chorus. And you're going to play the chorus twice. On the second part of the chorus, we've just got this little outro riff that I'll just play through. It's very simple to play. So end of the second chorus, we get this. <laughs> Very simple. So we're going to play five on the A string. We're going to play that four times, but we get this rhythm. Going down to the three. Same riff as well, same line. Then we've got three fives on the D string. Three fours on the D string. Two on the third fret of the A and then going to the open A. Play a power chord on there as well if you want. And that takes us to the end of the song.